Oh, it is a game changer. The gods of Adobe have listened and they have provided. So today I'm gonna to show you the new feature inside Photoshop that helps you change the sky in your photographs with just one simple click. Oh, stick around. What's up everybody, welcome back to another video here at Benham Media. My name is Nathan and it's an absolute pleasure to see all of you here today. Thank you so much for clicking on that thumbnail. Now before we get started, I'm just gonna let you know that I use the hashtag BMPix2020 over on Instagram. It would mean so much to me if you would start using that as you post your photographs. I know some of you have already, and if you do start using that hashtag, I will have a look at your photographs and I can give you a shout out on this channel. And if you ever are in London or if you are gonna go out in London, just maybe give me a shout over on Instagram and maybe we can hook up and take some photographs together. That'll be really awesome. It's a nice little collective community. We spend an awful lot of time indoors at the moment. and It'll be nice to meet other people to sort of experiment and share ideas and stuff like that. So yeah, hashtag BMPix2020. So this video, those of you who may have noticed that Photoshop have done um, some amazing updates. They are unbelievable. I highly recommend going in there and having a bit of a play. But this particular update has got me so, so excited. I live in London and London is a very overcast city. Quite often the sky is just bland or gray or horrible. In fact, most of the UK can be like it from time to time. So you may not know, but I change the sky in my photographs quite often. Like, can you even tell that these photographs right here, I have in fact changed the sky in these photographs to give them more drama, to make them more, more appealing to the eye rather than just having this horrible gray, cloudy sort of sky with this beautiful city that I call home. And beforehand, it was a nightmare. It was a lot of work, worth the work, don't get me wrong, but you know, I would have to cut out the sky, go around the buildings or the trees or anything like that, bring in another picture, drag that over to my original picture, sort of make sure it looks good and all sorts of things. And ah, oh, it was it was a nightmare. Like it was worth it in the end. The final product made my photographs look a lot better in my opinion. And Adobe has finally answered the prayers of anybody who likes to change the sky with this simple one-click feature inside Photoshop. I, I, I am, I'm literally blown away by it. So let's dive straight into the laptop and I'll show you how you can now change the sky in any of your photographs with one simple click. So this is the photograph that we are going to change the sky with. Just an example, it's not a bad sky, but it could be a little bit bluer or you might want something a little bit more dramatic. So the first thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna duplicate this layer. So we can either right click on the layer itself and duplicate it there, or you can just go Control J and get another layer like that. And then if we go up to edit and we come all the way down here to sky replacement and just click on that. Now the black magic of Photoshop is working in the background. It's figuring out what the sky is and what it actually needs to replace. So just give it a moment and it will just automatically change the sky just like that. And you see that it's given a nice dramatic change all just there. Now, what is also awesome about this is that you don't need to actually have this particular sky. So if you come in here, you're gonna have all these little folders come across as well. So if you go into blue skies, and you see nice little cloudy skies, and it will start changing it, and you'll get the example come straight up here. Now, if you zoom in by going Control Plus, you will actually see just how well this is done to your actual photograph. So beforehand, you would have to cut around these little bits here and it sort of fits it really, really well. And of course, you can just come through here and change it again. So if you want to come a little bit further down, have a nice little scattered skyline, again, it changes it in real time as well. And you can make all sorts of different settings or bring this up, you can refine the edges, bring it down. You see the old sky's coming through a little bit, refine the edges, so you can make all different types of settings. You can even set the brightness, so you can make it brighter, darker, and you can even, if you like, 
set the mood a little bit as well. So you can change the temperature of it. So make it a little bit more yellow or a little bit more blue, depending on the time of the sunset. Now, what's even more cool is that you don't need to actually just use the ones that Photoshop recommends. You can actually add your own skies in. So if you come down to the plus side, you can actually add your own skies in it. So here we go. We'll bring this in, open it up, and it will bring in the sky that I've got saved. And we'll go, call that Nathan's Sky 2. There you go. Now you can add that to it, you see, and then you can manipulate your photograph to sort of bring in the sky. And it is, it's simply one simple click to change the sky. And if you want, you can come down here when you want to sort of close it up. So you can go onto a duplicate layer or all new layers. And when you click OK, it comes up in its own little folder with layer masks as well. So you can still play around with it. And something as simple as this, if you go into something that's got a little bit more detail, so you go into another photograph and you've got a lot more sort of going on around it. And again, this is a very, very gray sky. So this is a typical London sky. So we're going to go Control J, go up to Edit, come down to Sky Replacement, let it do its black magic. Now it's remembered the last sky that I've used, which isn't going to work for this particular photograph. And there you are. You can just find a nice blue sky of some sort to try to make it look better. I like that. Again, you can change all sorts of things. So again, you can move it. So up here, you can move it down if you wish. You can even change the scale and it all happens live within the photograph as well. And then just press OK when you're happy. And again, you get all that with the layer mask. But if you look how well it has done with, you can still see the tops of the cranes, you can still see the shard, you can st it is just brilliant. And it is that simple, that easy. Now, one thing I will touch on is that when you are changing the sky, you need to make sure it matches the actual photograph that you are adapting as well. Like you can't just throw any sky onto any photograph. I'm gonna show you a little example just here. If you have a quick little look, and this is what I mean. As you can see, the shadow is going in this direction. So if you go and take a sky, and you can sort of straight away see that something is off because we know the sun is coming from this direction. So if you have a particular sunlight here, so this one here, that would fit it perfectly because the skyline itself, the sun is still coming from this direction. But if we've got, say, this particular sky here, now you can see by the shadow that the sun from the photograph here is coming from this direction, but that's okay. If this is the sky that you want to use, Come up here to flip, flip it around, and it'll flip it around for you as well. So once again, we have a skyline that fits the photograph. And that is very important. That is very, very important to make sure you do not pick a sky that doesn't actually match the photograph that you're trying to manipulate as well. So like, for example, this one's okay, but we can tell that the sun is over in this direction, which doesn't match the shadows coming across the pavement there. So that's just something you need to be aware of when you are changing the sky in your photographs. And that's it. That's all I wanted to show you in this video. Now, this is a game changer. I live in a city where eight months of the year it is overcast or rainy or cloudy. So to have the option to be able to change the sky in my photographs has always been a sort of like a, a lifesaver. You know, it brings more drama, more depth, more pleasing on the eye to a lot of the photographs where I would have probably thrown them away. So to have this feature, this one click feature is just brilliant. It literally takes hours out of editing for me and other photographers who like to use this particular photo manipulation. And this isn't it. This isn't just the only change Photoshop has done. There are so many unbelievable features in the new update, which if you want me to make a video of, please write in the comments and I will go through them and I will make videos of them as and when I can. But well done, Adobe. Well done. Like you guys are literally starting to listen to what a photographer needs or might want to make the whole editing process better. Now, I don't always use Photoshop. It's something that I would use as and when I might need it. I like using Lightroom. But to know that these tools and these functions are all there 
just makes my life easier. You know, it makes it easier for me to create better photographs, more prettier photographs. And I think that's all there is to it. Like for those of you who, who are not happy, like if you aren't happy with these new features, who feel that we're going too far in photo manipulation, where the real photo off the camera should stand out more, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your views. But for those of us who, who see photography as an art form, who see it as a way of taking a photograph or taking several photographs and creating art, and there are some brilliant YouTube channels out there that show such a thing. This is just blowing it out of proportion. So guys, that is it though. That is all I am gonna talk about today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, quotes or comments, please stick them down below. While you're there, if you fancy it, if it's something that you're into, maybe hit the like and potentially subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in anything else that I do here over at Better Media, my social media links are just down here and also in the description below. But guys, thank you so much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure having you all here today. Until next time, I've been Nathan. You've been sensational. Thank you and goodbye. Mwah, 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 mwah.